Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today's a special day because before Blade Show, we have Dave from ProTech. Good morning, George. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm really great now that we have a table full of ProTech. Yeah. It's my favorite kind of day. Yes. So this is all the new stuff for Blade Show, right? It is. So excited to be here for the Blade HQ grand opening of your new retail space. And uh, since we're in town, figured we'd show off some of our Atlanta gear. Uh, this Blade Show Atlanta 2024 we're going to have an unprecedented selection of ProTech at the booth and through all of our big dealers, of course, Blade HQ. So yeah, a nice preview of our Blade Show kit here. Okay, well, I'm really excited. We've been waiting here while the camera's setting up, and I've just had a million burning questions about this. Nice. So let's talk knives. All right, Dave, where are we starting? So this year is the 25th anniversary of ProTech Knives. And okay. as you're well aware, and uh, many of you have heard the story, 1999 is when it started at home on my kitchen table. And all these years later, quite a bit more going on than the kitchen table days. Uh, but to celebrate the anniversary, we're doing a number of different anniversary knives. Uh, we've chosen this Nexus pattern, which kind of mirrors some of our packaging. Ooh, let me grab a box and show them. You bet. And then sort of a subtle since 1999 on the back side so it's anniversary marked but on the subtle side and then this is one of the blade show specials that actually says blade show atlanta 2024 and then it's serial numbered of a couple hundred that we made so you've got a malibu nexus textured mother of pearl button magna cut warncliffe blade so it's anniversary it's blade show and it's a malibu it's, it's everything you love right yeah <laughs> Yeah, that Nexus texture, like not only does it look good and it matches this little strap that goes around the box, but it feels quite grippy too. It really does. So, yeah. I mean, I'm carrying my my Brotech today. Oh, nice. And it's the smooth aluminum. And Aww. I like that because it doesn't chew up the pocket. Very nice. But you oh, look at that. You've made a smooth landing for the pocket. Of course. You've yeah, thought little, of everything. Little <laughs> landing pad there for the clip. And so, yeah, for the Blade Show, we'll have a lot of different commemorative things. Some of them also anniversary. But this is definitely going to be one of the show pieces for us. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. Oh, and then Super fidgety. Keeping with the anniversary Malibu theme, uh, we do a lot of really neat things with Mike Erie, custom knife maker, friend of mine for probably 30 years. And so he's doing these incredible hand grind mirror polish blades. And so another Nexus group of Malibus with a Warncliffe and the Mike Erie hand ground blade, obviously smaller numbers. Uh, so keeping the anniversary theme going, uh, but at a different price point with some more customization. So you've got that real deep compound hollow grind and then a pearl button and individually serial numbered as well. Yeah, I want to know how Mike Erie does those grinds. Magic. They must be, yeah. like it's gorgeous. Yeah. And decades and decades of uh, hard work just practicing. Um, you know, all these different parts of building a, a knife in this range, you've got to have all the technology, all the hand craftsmanship. It takes all of it to bring this sort of thing uh, to life. Yeah. And I guess that's what really makes your Ultimate Custom Series what it is. Oh, you bet. Like, it's just so many master hands have touched these knives. And I love to see it. Oh, man, they even mirror polished the swedge on yes, that? Yes, oh, yes, Oh, my goodness. Yep. No stone unturned. Yeah. Very nicely done, Mike Erie, on that grind. So in the Malibus, obviously one of our most popular knives for the show. We'll also have a limited number of Sapphire Blue, uh, Abalone Push Button Malibus. Uh, you can expect those in Atlanta. Uh, it's a really hot treatment. It's a zirconium nitrate based coating, so super durable, also very beautiful. And we pair it with abalone button, all blacked out hardware. And this is a uh, dragon scale texture on this one. Okay. So this coating, I've been doing a little research on this mm -hmm. one because my buddy Jacob over in copywriting has a godfather with it. And nice. It's gorgeous. Yep. And Apparently, it also has a super low coefficient of friction. Yes. So if you're going to like cut food or something, it'll just fall off the blade, almost like one of those hollow edge. Sand super, tokens. super smooth. Very high lubricity. Very good corrosion resistance. It's a commercial grade coating that happens to be gorgeous. Sounds like it belongs on a pro tech. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, two different bronze aluminum framed uh, custom Malibus for the show. So what's really neat here is that you've got two different finishes two different materials and two different blade shapes, but both of them set in a dragon scale bronze aluminum frame. So this one's got the Mike Erie blade with a mosaic pin, and then this one is a Damasteel stainless Damascus blade, 
also hand ground, but the reverse Tonto. Mm -hmm. Is this a new Damasteel pattern? It is, and I cannot pronounce the names. I will not try, um, but it is. It <laughs> it's is new of, and it's gorgeous, I'll say that. Exactly. Oh, and we have a blue pocket clip? Yeah, titanium pocket clip on both of these, just to give it a little extra pop of color, make it a little more custom. Yeah, man, look at that Damascus pattern, guys. So we have a lot of customers who've been hunting for Malibus, and for the Blade Show, we're going to bring quite a spread of them. Yeah, that's four new variants on the Malibu. Yeah. So for you Malibu, Biggest five. knife show, biggest <laughs> knife show of the year, it's the time to bring the, the big Malibu selection. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you want one of these, be in Atlanta the first weekend in June. Or yes. Second? First weekend of June. First weekend. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. Seventh, eighth, ninth. Yep. Lots of Malibus to be fat, found. Had I can I can say words. <laughs> All right, what's next? Good job. <laughs> and then um, for the Blade Show in Atlanta, one of the categories that we're always known for there is that investor collector category. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of engraved knives in process now that'll be last minute miracles for the show. A few of them we have ready now, and so I'd like to show those off. One of them that I'm really excited about. This is a anniversary runt. So the first knife that I ever made was the original runt. And this is the Runt 5, the fifth generation, in an ultimate custom anniversary piece. So this one is hand engraved by Bruce Shaw. It has a beautiful Vegas Forge stainless Damascus blade. It's got a canary yellow diamond push button. And then across the back, it's got these five Vs for the 25 years. So again, very subtle uh, 25th anniversary. And then Bruce Shaw has hand engraved the Roman numerals 25 all full engraved around the spine, the back, the front, and he has promised to engrave 25 of these during the course of this year. So we will have a handful of these at the show ready for delivery, but a very special hand engraved anniversary run. Yeah, so when I look at these hand engravings, I'm just imagining how long that must take poor Bruce. Yeah. And he's doing 25 of them this 25 year. 25 this year, yeah. My goodness. And like, they're flawless. Zero, like perfectly straight lines, really tight curls on these paisley acanthus sleeves. Yeah, the, the scroll work is amazing. Um, and he and I do so many neat projects together. Um, it's, really, it's really something and very special for the anniversary. I love the engraving on the spine. You know, no surface left untouched by him. And even the pocket clip screws are hand engraved. If you look down inside, you'll see that the small screws that hold on the pocket clip have little flowers engraved on them. The pivot pin, everything. Oh my goodness, there's flowers on the pocket clip screws. Yep, yep. <laughs> Man, he's thorough. <laughs> oh yes, yep. Okay, that's incredible. And then uh, international engraving. Uh, these ultimate custom godsons are engraved by the Bottega Incensioni group in Brescia, Italy. So these are titanium frames. This one is really stunning. It's a blue anodized titanium frame with blue bark mastodon scales. It's got really amazing little details of 24 karat gold. Have a look at that, George. Okay. So, man, those are those like inlays of gold? They are. They are. So they make a little uh, recess, and then they inset those gold dots. And when you anodize them, the titanium with the gold in it, because it's a different metal, you get kind of a little halo around it, kind of highlights it. Um, and then the blue tones from the mastodon. Of course, each set of mastodon is going to be unique, but this one is particularly stunning. I love the engraved pocket clip. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So where does one acquire Mastodon bark? Walmart. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's special traders, special folks who deal in pearls and you know ancient ivories and things like that. And uh, you know, you have we have a very good relationship with the guy who sells this stuff, and he definitely saves some of the best pieces for us. Man. And you think about a knife like this and everything that goes into it. You've got aerospace grade titanium that's machined to tolerances within tenths of a thousandth of an inch, then all the hand satin finishing, the ancient ivory, which is cut on a CNC machine for perfect fit, then hand finished, then everything is disassembled and the frames are FedExed to Italy, where a team of people hand engraves each one, then sends it back, we rebuild it with some Damascus from Las Vegas. Um, it's, it's quite a world event to get a knife like this built. Um, yeah. Oh, that's Spirograph Damascus on that one. That's a beautiful pattern. Oh, indeed it is. Dave, I have a question for you. Let's hear it. I know that you know how to run a machine. 
I have, in fact, run machines. <laughs> Probably a lot of them. So my understanding is when you're running a CNC machine, the, one of the hardest parts of it is maintaining a fixture of your object. Okay. You got to make sure that it doesn't move while the machine's going. Certainly. So I'm pretty sure mastodons didn't grow tusks with <laughs> CNC machines in mind. <laughs> but also, this is a beautiful piece, and how do you fix this to a machine and still maintain a good wide piece of it? It's a, it's a very good question, and thankfully my team at ProTech, between when you're cutting Mastodon, there's no page in the machinist handbook mm -hmm. that gives you the clues about <laughs> how to do it, right? Like that's something that's learned, that's you know sort of tribal knowledge within the building, and my team's figured out a way to hold it without damaging it, and then precision machining it, but there's only so much that the machine can do because it's very thick and you wanna hold as much bark as you can. You can't take a fly cutter across and clean off that beautiful bark. Mm -hmm. So they're machining the outside, they're putting the holes in exactly the right place, then they hand it off to a knife maker and they're doing the finish work where they're taking some material off the bottom and then sanding the top and back and forth, getting it to the right thickness, but keeping as much of the character as they can. So it really is a excellent example of the science and the art that goes to, into one of our knives. Man, what what a treat to see that. Yeah. Because that fin look at that mastodon ivory bark. It's incredible. I mean, not only the journey it took to get there, but the journey it took to become this knife. Man, I'm sorry. I'm just, and then I have the, no words. In the same, uh, same family from the same engraving folks, we also did a few with this beautiful desert ironwood. Gives it a totally different tone. Uh, this is also a different Damascus. This is Vines and Roses Damascus on that one. Vines and Roses. I've never heard of that pattern, but I like it. It's really pretty. <laughs> yeah, the fact that we live at a time where you can call someone up on the phone and spec out the size Damascus piece you'd like them to hand forge with the pattern that you'd like, and they can actually deliver it, it's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. So I have another question about inlays here. Let's hear it. So my understanding is desert ironwood is a somewhat protected species. Yes. How do you get it? So there, uh, there are people who have a license uh, that can harvest it, and so you have to buy it from one of those licensed people. Um, we've been dealing with the same folks for years, and when they harvest it, they grade it, uh, and there's A, B, C, D, and so forth. The highest grade is this grade here, which is known as jewelry grade. And so it is a book matched set. If you turn it over front and back, they match perfectly. It's like a guitar. Yeah, yeah, and so it is an incredible wood. It's in very stable. It doesn't have to be stabilized. There's no resin or anything infused in it. It's as God made it. It's exactly as it came. Yeah, and ironwood's denser than water, yeah? It'll mm -hmm. sink. Yep. Very dense, very stable, incredibly beautiful, and this jewelry grade material, the figuring is out of this world. Yeah. So it sounds like Dave's got his engraving guy, he's got his mastodon guy, his mother of pearl guy, yep. his ironwood guy. Yep. Years ago, <laughs> I was giving a factory tour to some folks and we were talking about how one of these custom pieces comes into existence. And I was explaining, you know, sourcing the material and then the machining and the around the world trip that the handles took and everything. And their response to me was like, oh, I understand what you do now. You're the conductor of the symphony. <laughs> and I thought it was actually a very good way to describe it because there is so much that goes into a knife like that in our building, outside of our building, artists, machinists. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to coordinate. Yeah, and that's like when you say ultimate customs on these, I, I, it just makes sense to me why you would call it an ultimate custom yeah. because it's not one person's custom, it's a world of world-class exactly. artisans custom. Yeah, and every element on the knife has been upgraded. Uh, there isn't one part of it that hasn't been taken all the way ultimate. Yeah, and they, they do cost a pretty penny, but you've heard yes. what goes into them, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody then, needs a piece of the pie. <laughs> For the Blade Show in Atlanta, another big new product reveal is the Dmitry Sinkovich designed Oligarch automatic knife. And uh, Sinkovich is one of my favorite custom knife makers. He had approached us, we were neighbors at a show a few years ago and we got to chatting and he's like, you know, he did, they would like to design a knife for us and that has come into fruition. We introduced it at SHOT Show with some prototypes, but in Atlanta we'll roll out full production. We'll have a really neat selection of them. So this is kind of one of the base model 
Sinkovich Oligarch knives. So this is a black aluminum frame. It is very intricately 3D machined with all these curves and features. So it feels super slender in the hand, also in the pocket. It does have a uh, small deep carry pocket clip on the back side. And one of the things about the Sinkovich designs that I find really compelling is that they're unique. He's got a lot of fantastic design elements that make them unusual, but you also have a completely usable blade shape. A lot of times when people go outside the box with design, you lose functionality, and with him, you really get both. It's amazing. And so it's a flat ground, magna cut blade. The Blade Show base model edition will also have an inlaid push button. Um, this is a machine satin finish. So this is a machine, our machine, in the building. This particular finish is right off of it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful satin right from the machine. Yeah. You, you can almost catch a teeny bit of a reflection in it. Mm -hmm. It's a very uniform thing, like only a machine can give you. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And th that, that, that iconic design, but also usable, yes. is something that I, I noticed this at SHOT Show. Like, this knife looks very distinctive. It looks unlike any knife I've ever seen before. But in my hand, I'm like, this is a knife. I know how to use it. It's not going to surprise me in any way. Yep. And like Dmitry Sinkovich is really good at his job. Like, yeah. And the, the blade shape with that nice high primary grind, it gives you a nice slicey edge. It's ready to go to work. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible looking knife and different than anything else we've ever made. But it's also going to perform very well for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then it hits super hard like a ProTech ought to. Of course. So in the Sinkovich design, we'll have these aluminum frame models. Mm -hmm. We'll also have some stainless steel customs. So these are 17-4 stainless steel. And what we do, George, that's kind of unique with these is we full harden the stainless steel bars before machining. So they're machined very slowly, very painfully. Lots but of sparks. Lots of, yeah, <laughs> lots, of, lots of time, lots of chips. And, but the end result is an incredibly stable steel frame that's super flat, super parallel, and very overbuilt. Um, some knives will get scratched by your pocket and things in your pocket. This one will scratch the things in your pocket. <laughs> I love to hear it. Yeah. That's one thing with titanium handles, raw titanium. Mm -hmm. They get, I guess they call them snail trails yes, sometimes. Yes. And that's why if I had an Ultimate Custom, I'd be like, I'm never putting this in my pocket course, because I would hate to scratch it. But I like to see that here. And hardened steel on a handle is not something you see a lot. No, it's, it's a little over the top. Um, yeah. yeah. And I've heard of people when they make blades, you, you probably know more about this than I do, that you'll often harden before you grind. Correct, same here. Like, yep. Yeah, those are ground hard. And so you also have this really neat uh, dual finish where it's matte blasted, the satin flats, and then we actually, after all that, we put it back in the machine to do that engraving in that center section. So you have matte, satin, matte, satin, kind of a multi-two-tone finish. Very, very unique look. Yeah. And it's like a textural contrast mm -hmm. too. It almost yep. gives you a little bit more grip. Different tones, different textures. And then to keep the, um, Sinkovich, you know, going a little farther, we're also going to have a 100-piece limited edition with a stainless steel frame and an incredible Chad Nichols stainless Damascus. Chad Nichols does really good work. Yeah. Yeah, it's phenomenal. This is his virus pattern, which is one of my go-to patterns. I'm a big fan of it. Um, so super snap on that. Um, satin hardware, of course, the stainless steel frame, and then a Damascus blade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for people who've been waiting for the Sinkovich Auto to hit the market, they'll have a really neat selection in Atlanta. Yeah, and the Oligarch. Yes. I love that name. <laughs> Man, you guys come with a lot of good names for knives. It's, sometimes that's the hardest part. Yeah. Um, it really is. It really is. And then for Atlanta, one thing people have been asking for a lot is our Mordax. And we're going to have a first ever Mordax release in Atlanta with our bronze aluminum framed uh, version, DLC black coated Magna Cut blade a black pearl push button. Uh, this will be a numbered uh, Blade Show piece, so it will be marked Blade Show Atlanta 2024, individually numbered. The weight on these bronze aluminum is so great. It gives you a little bit of heft. It gives you a little something extra to hold on to, and they flip like a dream. Mm -hmm. So when I am going to see family, uh -huh. and I want to bring a knife th that will show them, yes, knives are high quality, I never bring anything lightweight. Okay. Because I'm... Like, I'm to the point in knives where I can feel quality even if it's light, 
but my brothers are not that way. Right. Always bring something with a little bit of meat to it because yep. like, oh, this, Some this substance. is a knife. Yep. And I think bronze aluminum does a really good job of that because not only does it have that heft that just mm. makes it feel extra, but it also looks so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Truly gorgeous. And I, one thing I love about the CNC machining you do on these is how as the surface darkens, often the the lines where you've ground in will highlight it just oh, a little yeah. bit. Oh yeah, you get this two-tone effect where it patinas across the top and then down inside the texture it stays a little bright. Yeah, it's a beautiful look. Yeah, my buddy Timote carries his Runt 5 with it. Nice. And th the entire thing looks like chocolate. Awesome. But then the little grind spots in there are just pop out. Oh, it's so good. Yep. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then another aluminum bronze piece that we're going to have for the show that's very limited and numbered is this textured bronze runt with a beautiful Starfire Damascus. It's our first time using that. It's such a neat Damascus pattern. We had to give it a try. Starfire. Yeah. Man, the Damascus names are getting cool too. Yep. <laughs> yep so individually numbered uh, special runt five piece with bronze and Damascus. I wonder how they make those little flecks come in because when you make Damascus, you have to fold it up. I have honestly no idea. I am just the conductor of the symphony. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> Man, wow. Wow, wow, wow. It all moves forward so fast. It does, like, does. One of the ooh. classic ProTech models is our TR3, and it feels like it wouldn't be a Atlanta Blade Show if we didn't have some kind of special TR3 for the show. So this is something that we built. Uh, it's one of our rare fish scale with the safety models. This one's got the stainless steel one-piece safety, a gold pearl push button, a two-tone stonewashed satin blade, and these also will be marked Blade Show 2024 and individually numbered. These will be at a very, very good price point. One of the neat things about our show kit, George, that I'm really proud of is that we've got a little something for everybody, you know, from probably around 200 bucks up to thousands and everywhere in between. We've got titanium, bronze, We've got Magna Cut, we've got 20 CV, we've got Pearl Buttons, we've got Tritium Buttons, we've got a heck of a show. Uh, and so this TR3, very, very nice um, base model, but slightly upgraded for the show with the Pearl Button and the special serial numbering. Yes. TR3. This is such a good knife, It's a Dave. Protect classic. <laughs> it and this one turned 20 years old last year? Yes. Yeah, and like how could you improve on it? It's just, it's like perfect. Yeah, it's a very slender carry for a three and a half inch blade auto. Uh, very popular with police and military folks. Uh, it's one of the ones we sell the most of. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, and then <laughs> one thing we did have at the SHOT Show, which we're following up in Atlanta on, is the manual version of the TR3. So using the tuned detent system that's in the Malibu and the Mordax, but basically inflicting that on the TR3 is this new model. So this is a very special 20-piece prototype group with a 17-4 stainless steel frame. It's kind of got a two-tone matte blasted and satin stone wash, and then again, Mike Erie hand ground blades. This is a brand new thumb stud that we designed from scratch. I'm super excited for it. It is a dual thumb stud, so both sides. There will only be 20 of these prototypes in Atlanta, so these will be a hot ticket. Yeah, get and there then, quick. <laughs> yeah, we hope to roll out these TR3 button lock manuals in full production between now and the end of the year. So by Christmas, you should see aluminum framed versions and production versions, uh, but this is kind of the last prototyping step is this group, and now we can run production, but these will have in Atlanta. Okay, so I, I'm a thumb stud guy. You I'm are a studly guy. guy. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, and that thumb stud is really good. Yeah. So one of my problems with thumb studs, and you can kind of see this on my hands, is my my right thumbnail is peeled back a little more than my uh, left because I work with knives and understood. I'm with thumb studs. And that's because a lot of thumb studs are really small mm -hmm. that you kind of want to push on them with the front of your thumb. But this one, you can land it right on the top and it's going to work just fine. And does that not sound? Yeah, the walk and the talk. Mm. Yep. Yeah. And I assume this is the same pre-hardened steel it that is. we saw on the other one. Of course one. it is. Of course it is. Man, no stone unturned. And then a few other things we'll have for the show that I'm excited about are Prometheus Design Works 
Invictus Auto Collaboration. This is a knife that we're only able to cycle every so often. It's not something that we have in production continually. There's a lot of extra work in this, a lot of extra machining. It's got the safety, it's got, and anyway, we upgraded it to the stainless steel one-piece safety. We also moved the blade steel to MagnaCut, and for the show, a pearl button. This gray, kind of almost monochrome look is super handsome and I think a little different than anything we've done in this knife before. Uh, so these will be kind of subtly serial numbered, and then on the box, it'll say Blade Show Atlanta, uh, but that's a special Invictus Auto that we'll have for the show. Mm -hmm. So in my time at Blade HQ, I've never seen like a huge amount of regularly available Invictus autos. No, no, we cycle it only ever so often. Try the action on this one, George. This is one of the fastest. Ooh, that thumps. The Watch crack. my arm just jiggle. When it nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Watch my arm jiggle, he says. Yeah, I should get a motorcycle and we like tattoo an American <laughs> flag right here. And that'd be a good time. I can see it, I can see it. <laughs> Yeah, but if you like this Invictus, and I do, and once you feel it, you will too, I would hop on it. Yeah. I it's... would come and chase Dave down at Blade Show and because these are a rare species. Indeed. Man, they hit hard. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a screamer. Yeah, so do all of your knives use their own spring? They do. We have a few springs that are shared uh, across a couple different models, but uh, yeah, in the inventory room, as you would imagine, there are a lot of springs of various uh, caliber, so to speak. Yeah. yeah, but they're the best in the biz. Thanks. Thanks. I've never seen a Protex spring break. No, it's, uh, it's pretty rare. Um, this one, though, has a particular snap to it. It's... Boink. <laughs> really good. And Come then tell me who your spring guy is. Our, uh, <laughs> Emerson collaboration, which is something we've proudly had for, geez, probably almost 20 years. And uh, in the ProTech brand, true to our brand, we're always trying to bring something a little different that we haven't taken out to a show before. So even though we've built the Emerson for 20 years, this is a, a group that no one's ever seen. So it's a really nice dark OD green anodized a pearl button, and then a beautiful two-tone blade. We also upgraded the blade steel on the Spearpoint Emersons to 20 CV. So even though we've made this knife for 20 years, this will be the first time a customer's ever seen one in a textured green pearl button two-tone 20 CV blade. Also upgraded on these Emersons is the new wider deep carry pocket clip. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of neat upgrades at a super good price point. Again, trying to have something for everyone at the biggest knife show of the year. I feel like this Emerson's a great choice for people too. Yeah. So I have another machining question Let's for you. So the, this jigging pattern, mm -hmm. we're calling it jigged, yep. right? So on a lot of traditional knives, jigging is when they'll go in with a little Dremel or whatever and they'll make little things. So is this like a random pattern determined by the staff or is this in the machine, like so the machine does it? the original, like you said, old school knives, like old case knives and things like that had jigged bone, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of amber jig bone is really common on those knives. And one of my engineer programmers, Gary, is a texturing wizard. And I showed him some samples of some different jigged bones and things that I liked. And he's worked for me for, I don't know, probably about 11 years. And he and I get along great. He understands what I want. And so believe it or not, I showed him some examples. I gave him some photos and I directed him. This was a hole in one. This was the first thing that he brought me to take a look at. I was like, you nailed it. That's exactly what I wanted. He's like, are you sure? You I said, nope, stop, that's it. And so anyway, I, this is all done CNC machined and every single one of these comes out the same, but that's him writing the code, making the lines, trimming the lines, basically custom making code for a custom texture. And so if someone else has a textured machine pattern, it won't look anything like this. Uh, it's a one of a kind pattern, but it is the same on every knife. Man, you have quite the team, Dave. Yes, thankfully. They do a lot of really good work. Yeah, yeah, they're the best. Mm -hmm. And then uh, not to leave the left-handed folks out, uh, we've also built some left-handed in these beautiful jigged Emersons. So we are, I believe, one of the only production knife companies to ever build left-handed specific automatic knives. And so a lot of times, just to sneak in something left-handed, we'll usually do a fairly base model, just a solid black aluminum frame or something. But this time we decided, I was so in love with this texture that we should have some for the left-handed folks as well. So if you're a Southpaw, we've got you. Uh, and these will be available at the Blade Show as well. 20 CV, all blacked out um, with the jig texture. Also the new deep carry pocket clip. 
Yeah. So Ernest Emerson is renowned in the knife world for self-defense knives. Mm -hmm. And I know that he served in the military and has probably earned his fair share of experience in that field. And I wonder if a lot of righties are going to like this as well because they use their left hand, their weak side for offside carry. It's known as knife. yep, yep. We do a lot of left-handed knife business for law enforcement professionals for offside carry, exactly like you're describing. If they were in a struggle for their firearm, they'd have something they could open quickly with their left hand. Yeah, with a nice texture that's not going to go anywhere, and a snappy action that'll open every time, and a tough blade steel that'll handle it and be sharp and. Yeah, yep. of everything. <laughs> yep, exactly. And then uh, something we haven't built for a minute are some of these Bruchaw skull inlays. So a few years ago, we had a whole skull theme going, and there were a lot of these coming through, and uh, we've kind of taken a break from it, but people were asking for it. So what I love about this Blade Show edition is it's our TR2, which is a knife that goes all the way back to the kitchen table days, one of the original ProTech models that we did recently upgrade with a new texture, MagnaCut steel, and again, the new wide deep carry pocket clip. So it's a very original ProTech model, updated, and then also with the Bruchaw Sterling Silver Skull, a mother of pearl push button. And then if that wasn't enough, it's marked and numbered for the show. Um, so a very special piece. It's got a little bit of ProTech history. It's got a bunch of new upgrades and commemorative for the show. I love how you haven't tried to fix what wasn't broken here. Thanks, George. Like, just little touches here and there, to like little quality of life improvements. But this is still a TR2 to, through and through. Yep. This is what everybody fell in love with 20 years ago or more. 25. 25 yeah. years ago, back on your kitchen table. And still shoots, man. And then, so you said this is an inlay? Yes. So originally the Shaw skulls were hand carved in stainless steel. So mm -hmm. the first couple Shaw skull knives we had, he did completely by hand. And it was a huge hit. Everyone wanted it, and there was a ton of interest in it. I can imagine how much work that must have been. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a deep relief engraving, right? You send him a solid steel piece, and he carves till there's nothing left but the skull. It's amazing. It's like Michelangelo with yes. a knife. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so with the excitement and the interest in that, he, and he originated the idea because I told him, I said, there's a lot more demand than you're going to be able to engrave by hand. And it was his idea to have these cast in sterling silver. So we took one that he engraved and cut by hand to a jeweler friend of mine and using the lost wax casting, right, the ancient method of making jewelry, we have these cast in sterling silver and one of the really neat things that the jeweler came up with, he asked me, how are you going to affix them to the knives? And I said, well, we'll probably glue them in. He said, ah, what if it pops off? He's like, if someone's skull flies off their knife, they're, they're probably going to be very disappointed. You probably want to screw it in also. And so one of the ingenious things about these skulls, when he made the mold, he uses the actual screws that we do in the mold cavity. So on the back side of that skull, cast into it are little threads. So we screw those in from the backside and glue them in. So your skull will never pop off. I don't think we've ever had one fall off or come off. Screwed in from the back, glued in, uh, sterling silver skull. Wow. <laughs> Once again, very thorough. <laughs> yes, yes. You thought of everything. And I imagine that because it's like a, a different piece that is now inlaid, that will bring the price down from what the original oh, of course. full deep yes, yes. engraving was. Yes. Yeah, these are at a very attainable price point um, as opposed to those hand engraved ones, of course. Yeah, but those hand engraved ones were really cool. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yeah. A okay. uh, couple more things, last couple pieces uh, for the Blade Show kit. Our PT Plus Strider design. We're very proud of our Strider collaboration. It's been about 10 years that we've been doing uh, work with those fine folks. And this model, it's the slightly larger, smaller Strider model. So the PT, but about 12, 13% larger than the PTs of about five years ago. So we made it a pinch bigger so that we could use our Godson button and spring. Uh, we also upgraded the steel to MagnaCut. We put our small deep carry pocket clip on it. This one with the nice green anodized and the pearl button is the Blade Show Special Edition. So a little bit different and then a free upgrade to the pearl button and the serial numbering for Atlanta. Okay. And so one thing I like about ProTech knives is even the smooth ones, like something about the anodize has, yes. like I've heard it described as chalky, but <laughs> I don't know that I quite feel chalk in it. I feel. A little bit of texture. A little bit of texture, and it all has to do with the 
pre-finished before the coloring. And so after the handles come out of the machine, they go through a slight tumbling process, kind of a stonewash finish. Mm -hmm. Then from there, they're individually blasted. And after years and years of tinkering with different media, we've come up with what we believe is the nicest of those finishes. So it gives it a nice uniform color, but you also have a little bit of micro texture there. So it's not super slippery or smooth. Uh, yeah, we're very proud of the way those come out. Well, I'm, I'm pleased very much. Excellent. It's one of my favorite things about the Protex. It's just they feel nice no matter what surface texture they have. You can't say that of G10 or Micarta. Those need to be textured the, the right way. But. And then one of the, uh, of course, the big uh, hits for us is the Operator Series. And so for the show, we have a lim very limited number of these Rock Eye Operators. So this is the Les George designed auto knife that we build, a fantastic kind of duty driven design uh, from a Marine. And this one is all blacked out, the tritium push button. Um, anyway, beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick up a rock eye. I just wanna go cut something yeah. big and thick and hard to cut. Yep. Like a big piece of hose or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's got the operator treatment, which just makes it feel a little more tough and a little more awesome. Of course. Yeah. That snap. That snap. Man, I gotta get me a rock eye one of these days. I've been eyeing this one actually, the operator one. They're good. All right. <laughs> anyway, Dave, that was a big table. Yeah. And it's going to be a fun blade show for you It's guys. going to be amazing. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Okay. So which one of these is your favorite one? I think the Sinkovich, honestly, I, I'm so proud of the collaboration uh, with Dimitri. And it's been such a long time coming. Um, the execution of his design, getting all of his very special design elements to actually come through in production, I, I'm thrilled about it. Yeah, we're excited about it too. You have a lot to be proud of with this one. Thank you. Well, Dave, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Thanks, George. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm for sure going to swing by the ProTech booth and see how things are going. Of because course. We insist. <laughs> wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you like any of the knives you saw here, make sure you're at the Blade Show in Atlanta that first weekend in June. Come say hi to Dave. He loves to meet you guys. We'll see you in Atlanta. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you.